He says. You see, this is what I want to know. Why in Christianity is salvation through a human sacrifice, which is something barbaric, which is something normal humans would not agree to, let alone God Almighty, who is the most just of all. We considered him stricken by God, smitten under He was pierced for our transgressions. You just want to have read from the scripture, but do you understand? This is Isaiah talking. Isaiah, if you read, if you read Ezekiel 18, it says the son is not accountable for the sin of the father, and the father is not accountable. You don't want to have a dialogue. She's not even having, making eye contact. She just wants to look down and preach. You know, we we have a dialogue. That's a better way to understand. You know, when Jesus was preaching, he used to have a dialogue as well. He used to listen to people, not only just preach from the book which he didn't even have in his hands. He was preaching to people to come to one God, to believe in one God. Yes, and this is exactly what all the prophets and all the messengers, they all preach the same message, to worship the one true God. If you, look, if you read your book, go to John chapter 17, verse 3, and he says, this is eternal life that they know you, referring to the Father, that you the only true God. If Jesus himself says that there is only one true God, Jesus says, uh, to the Father, glorify me. That's very rude of you, mister. Yeah, yeah. So you see, Jesus himself is... Very next verse. What does he say? Uh, read it, read it. Read what he says, the next verse. That's not the next verse. That's the, th that's the third verse you write. Read verse 4. Read verse 4. See what he says. And 3, 3 and 4. Okay, did you see how quickly she read that without even understanding it? Okay, let's understand that. She said she read that verse which says the No no let's let's have a dialogue. Let's have a she wants to have a monologue. <laughs> okay, so Jesus says that you the only true God and afterwards he says I have completed the works. So before before Jesus is listen, 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 listen. Listen, before, what, did Jesus say that before the crucifixion, do you want to have a dialogue or you just want to preach? Yeah, yeah. So, so listen to this. Did Jesus complete the works before the crucifixion? Listen, are you going to listen? Did Jesus, oh, she just wants you to run away now. That's fine. She's a lady, maybe she's more. That's fine. I don't know if she's a Christian. Are you a Christian? You are a Christian. So what do you make of that verse which the lady just read? So there were three. Okay, so it was John 17, 3, where Jesus says that this is eternal life that you know, uh, uh, that we know that you, the only true God. You see, that verse is very clear as to who the only true God is, based on Jesus' own admission, based on his own preaching and his own confirmation. He's referring to the Father and saying, you, the only true God. What do you make of that? Because from my understanding, the Christians believe, I don't know if you're one of the uh, Christians who believe in a trinity. So they believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one being God. But Jesus himself is actually kind of opposing that view by saying and calling the Father the only true God. What do you make of that? Yeah, it's in John... By the way, New Testament is written not in Hebrew or Aramaic, it's written in exactly. So so what you have today is is a language that Jesus did not preach in. So it's it's already second hand in that case. You see what I mean? So what are you left with then? You're left with a Greek version. Yeah, but no, but the thing is the belief that you have is based on what? Is it based on the scripture or is it based on something else? No, but that, that still has to be based on something. You see, 
one cannot understand God without, yeah, without the scripture, because the scripture is something that what the prophets came to basically deliver to the people as a message. So this is their the message of God being delivered through the messengers to the people at large. Now, one of these messengers, as a Muslim, I believe Jesus was a messenger of God. As a Muslim, I believe he is one of the mightiest messengers of God, and he's a Messiah as well, the chosen one by God. And this Messiah is the one now telling you in John, one of the Gospels of the Bible, it says, this is eternal life that we know that you, the only true God. Uh, for us, Messiah was basically someone who's chosen by God. Yes, he's the one anointed by God. And he had a particular, what is it, a particular mission. Now, one of his mission was to preach the message of God to the Bani Israel, to the children of Israel. That's why Jesus says, I've not come except for the lordship of Israel. Yes, in Matthew. However, when we look at the message of Jesus, it's not very different in terms of the belief in God to the previous messengers. So none of the messengers that I know of from the Old Testament or anyone from the New Testament or even Jesus Christ ever advocated a triune God. So where, where, did, the, where did the Christians get this from? The triune God, the belief? Elohim? Elohim? Yeah. Uh, Rafa, but it doesn't go into the names of God until later in the Old Testament, but in the new t in the, the start of the Old Testament Genesis it refers to God's plural. Yeah, but we don't we don't worship in God's plural, do we? Uh, what does that mean? Plural in office. Um, so light light can be from a bowl, light can be from a candle, light can be from a fire. It's still the same energy, but three different representations of the same okay let's 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 see in terms of human beings so you are a human being I'm a human being the Queen of England is a human being yes we are three different people yes but we are all human beings so our species of human being yes homo sapiens we as a species we relate with each other with with that commonality that we all are human do you believe there is such a relationship do you think there is like a species of God out there But you know when all the prophets, when they say that you must worship only one God, what do they mean by that? Because in the Old, so in context, in the Old Testament, you had what probably would be similar to Hinduism today. Or really? Of, well, the Hindus got 330 million gods. Exactly. So this is not what the Abrahamic faith preaches. The Abrahamic faith... Yeah, sure. My apologies. Go on. And the Mesopotamian gods were very similar to Hinduism. Today. Mesopotamia. I, I say that because my my uh, very close friend is Hindu. Okay. So we've, I've tried to understand his family perspective, and we've researched a lot. So I've learned a lot. But when Abraham was taught you worship the one God, it yes. was in that context, which was only is one God. Everything else is a misrepresentation, and it's not God. So it was that whole need for an idol, the whole need for something. Physical, the whole need for multiple things that they could attach themselves to. That was when the children of Israel were out of Egypt, and Moses went up to the mountain. By the time they'd come back down, they were back to their own practices again. Yeah. Remember the golden cloud? Yeah. So that's, that's, the, that's the context it was written in. Um, but what it means today for me, like I said, to the gentleman on the um, But God actually disapproved of those idol worships. God disapproved of anything or associating anyone in worship with him and, and Judaism and Judaism because you know these Abrahamic faiths they they basically denounce any worship of any idols or false gods and the only one true God is the God of Abraham the God of Jacob the God of uh, Ishmael the God of Isaac the God of uh, Moses and even the God of Jesus you see what I mean so when Jesus was on earth yes he was supposed to be the best example for people and that's the reason that's the reason people used to believe and worship the one true God and Jesus proclaimed the same thing okay guys guys
Okay, so what I'm saying is this. If, if all the prophets in the Old Testament and the prophets in the New Testament and Jesus himself and Prophet Muhammad who came later after, after Jesus, all of them preached and worshipped the one true God, then anyone who worships other than this one true God, then this is something that God himself will disapprove of. They worship one God. You're an RE teacher? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we don't doubt that there are prophecies about Jesus in the Old Testament, but there are also prophecies about other prophets like Prophet Muhammad in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament. But this is what I'm trying to tell you. The, the question is not about in Isaiah 42, in the New Testament in John 16, 14. So when he says, when he talks about the paraclete, yes. <laughs> so when it when it when it talks about the paraclete, um, <laughs> he's a funny guy. Yeah. So 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 the paraclete or the comforter. Yes, Jesus says that I have many things to tell you now, but you cannot bear them. Yes, he, the comforter, the paraclete will come and lead you into all truth. We believe that's Muhammad. What do you believe that is? Okay, let me ask you something. Was the Holy Spirit already there when Jesus proclaimed this, uh, these words? No, no, was, was Holy Spirit already there? So I'll give you one example. Elizabeth, when she was pregnant, yes, exactly, yes, and that is by what? What did she say? That is by, by the Holy Spirit, yes. Well, the Spirit, the Holy, the Holy Spirit. In some of the Bible versions, it says the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we know that this Spirit that Elizabeth was talking with regards to John, yes, was because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, if the Holy Spirit was already there in the world, yes, why would Jesus? say that until I go, he will not come. It doesn't make sense, do you see? So, well, I believe, and I don't know if all Christians believe this, but okay. I also believe that whenever Jesus ascended and the Holy Spirit um, came down, yeah. we as Christians were empowered with the same power to do the same thing as Jesus did. No, no, you didn't understand the question I asked. Let me repeat the question. Jesus said, until I go away, yes? This, the uh, the spirit of truth will not come. Yes? Yeah. Now, this would only make sense if the Holy Spirit, let's assume that is the Holy Spirit, Jesus is talking about. This statement from Jesus will only make sense if the Holy Spirit was not, was not already in the world. But the Holy Spirit was already in the world. You see, during the baptism of Jesus, remember the Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove. So the Holy Spirit was already there. Not in the full dispensation, because in Acts of the Apostle it talks about the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, but it was not given in complete measure until the Yeah, but, but that's not what Jesus said. Jesus did not say that until I go away, the Holy Spirit will not reveal himself in full dispensation. He said, until I go away, he will not come. Yes, exactly, will not come. What that tells us is that the comfort is not there. That's why he said, I have to go and send him. You see what I mean? And this is, of course, speaking metaphorically, send him doesn't mean like, oh, you go now, it's your turn. You know what I mean? Like this, this is something which happens as the uh, as sequence, as the next sequence in, in, in the uh, plan of God. Now, if that is the case, and there's another aspect as well. In the same statement, Jesus said that he will not speak of his own. He will only say what he hears. Now imagine this, if the Holy Spirit is a true God, which as a Christian you believe one of the uh, uh, members of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit, and if the Holy Spirit is God, do you think the Holy Spirit requires permission to speak? Yes, because Jesus said, He will not speak of His own, He will only say what He hears. To speak, to say anything. Like Jesus says, until he hears, yes, he will not speak of his own. Okay, so you and I, we speak of our own. We don't require any permission from anyone, do we? Because God has given... 
no, I'm teasing. Yeah, right. yeah. So we have the free will to speak as we feel and when we feel to speak. Obviously, un un unless there is some sort of a, um, uh, a problem with, with, with your vocal cords or speech or whatever. Yeah. And God has given us this ability to speak. Now, bearing that in mind that we have the ability to speak without, without anyone telling us what to say and when to say it, but you see what Jesus was saying is that this spirit of truth, the paraclete, the comforter, he will not speak of his own. He will only say what he hears. To me, that doesn't sound like a God or even someone who is able to speak on his own when he, when he feels like it. So if this was the Holy Spirit, it doesn't really, doesn't really, we cannot reconcile this with an almighty God who is able to speak with his, with the freedom. But even if it's a gentleman. No, no, I'm not saying with, 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 uh, what do you say? relationship with you and the Holy Spirit. I'm saying relationship of the Holy Spirit with the Father. So the Father is the one who tells the Holy Spirit what to say. And if the Holy Spirit will not say anything of his own. In John 16 again, because it's, Jesus says he will not speak of his own. He will only say what he hears. He hears from whom? You see what I mean? Yes. So, so the Father is the one who is the ultimate authority. Yes, because it doesn't. If you cannot reconcile it with the Holy Spirit, because a the Holy Spirit was already in the world, so there's no point in Jesus saying until I go away, the Holy Spirit will not come. And b the Holy Spirit is not someone who is who requires permission to speak, because the Holy Spirit should be the one who is God according to your belief. And if if it's God. Then God doesn't need anyone's permission to speak. If you, you see what I mean? Yeah. Now I'll tell you why it's Muhammad. Yeah, sure, sure. Go on. Yeah. God is not the same in all the religions. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Because every religion. Portrays him differently. Exactly. And, and the same within the Abrahamic faiths. Yeah. yeah, and the character of God is very different. Yeah. So I used to say, I mean, your understanding of the Holy Spirit is based on your understanding of Allah. No, it's based on the understanding of the. Because for us, the Holy Spirit is not like part of a God. You see what I mean? So our understanding of the Holy Spirit in Islam is the Holy Spirit to me is an angel of God. So when he talks about the Holy Spirit, yes, then it's the the Holy One who is a spirit, an angel from God. You've just said to me that if the Holy Spirit would only speak of Himself, God doesn't need permission to speak. But that is from your perspective of God. No, that's my perspective of the Trinity. Okay, so my perspective of the Trinity is God doesn't force Himself on anybody. And that's my perspective. So it's like um, free choice, free will, invitation. You want to listen, you don't want to listen. So what do you make of Jesus' statement when He says, He will not speak of His own? He will only say what he hears. What do you make of that? I understand it differently to you. I understand it as in the, the Holy Spirit's office is to glorify God. That is it. To glorify God? Well, you glorify God, don't you? I glorify God. So how is the Holy Spirit any different to... Glorify God as in a simple example. You walk along, you see a blind man, you open the eyes of the blind man. It's the Holy Spirit, does it? It's not the man. No, we are not talking about, we are not talking about miracles. What we are talking about is something as basic as speech. So when Jesus says he will not speak of his own, what do you understand by that? What I've just explained to you, I believe that in that context, it means that the Holy Spirit hasn't come to speak of anything but to glorify God. So that's how most Christians understand the Holy Spirit. I can understand it from your perspective. No, but, but look, if, if the Holy Spirit is God, then first and foremost, will he not speak of his own? Means by, by his own free will. Like the way you speak. But that's 
how, how did you make that interpretation? Taught by whom? By the church? So where did you learn the religion from, if not the church? You went to a Christian school? I'm older than you, trust me. <laughs> okay. I mean, I was 1980, so yeah. we brought up in Northern Ireland. We were taught a lot of the Bible. It's just a different set of Right. Um, but no, I get what you're saying. That makes sense. I didn't know that about Muhammad being prophesied yes, yes. as the comfort. Because Muhammad, one of his names is, sorry, one of his, uh, the other name is Ahmed and Muhammad. And this is, the meaning of this is the praise one, the one who deserves praise. So this is one of the names of Muhammad and also from this the other name Ahmed and the name comforter in Greek yes has a very close correlation plus there